Hi, uh, good morning and good evening to everyone. Welcome to mainframe tutorial JCL video 5. So in my last video, I was telling you about the keyword parameters and the positional parameters at DD activity and job level. So in this video, I would be explaining about the sample JCL using a keyword and positional parameters what is the importance of PS and the PDS data sets and also we will be seeing up what are the different kinds of IBM utilities we use in the JCL so let's go ahead and start with the sample JCL using keyword and positional parameters so this is the sample JCL card where I have been using making use of all the keyword and positional parameters this is a this is the job card this is the activity and these are all the DD, DD, DDs, DD statements. You can see the accounting information, the program name, the class parameter, message class and the message level and activity level. This is the program name and uh, I'm making use of the palm parameters. These are the keyword parameters at activity level in the same way looking at the DD level this is the one of the keyword parameter at DD level so we can I can give you one more example so job level activity level and the DD level so these are the various keyword parameters used at the DD level so one is this space DCB block size unit and so on so this is the one of the IBM utility called IEFBR14 which is used to create a data set which is a PS okay let's see what is PS and its in its importance in the mainframe environment or I can say simply mainframe world so it is a fix physical sequential file where the data can be in the form of a raw data or a comma delimited data or a report format data or a data with channels for printing purpose when I say a raw data so the data can be in the form of one two three four some data is there or it can be form of X Y it might be of what it, it might be the different common there is there are no spaces between the data or nothing is there so there is no delimited or something it's continuously raw data what we do is we read we extract this data based on the position based on the positions we identify and we use it for processing it or we we use it for some calculations we use it for from creating a report or something we receive this data from upstream system where it can be a java system or a .NET system whatever there might be a different system so we receive the data in this raw format we for we, we process it and we generate reports or do set of calculations when I say a comma delimited for comma delimited data so it is same like the raw data uh, you can say like suppose I have some account number with the 401021 uh, comma delimited and my account name is Kumar mind my residence the country is India and my postal code is something like 510102 and the streets and so on so these are these are separated by comma so we can process and it can shows a clear indication uh, we will have a clear idea about what exactly the data is by looking at the data set so this is one kind of uh, comma delimited data we can see and another is a report format data so this I can say it's output data which is processed based on receiving this data for example I receive the comma delimited data with so and so records so and so records information so for, for example the comma delimited data has something account information account information with uh, two records I'm saying it as Roger one on India and I can say I can, uh, I can say Alex say 
Alex. Pencil. Pencil. Five. UK. Sure. So you, I can say I can take four and more examples here. Australia. So, so I have the set of records with uh, uh, four records in my uh, comma delimited data set. So, I want to create a report with uh, how many records are there with the India and how many records there are there with country Australia, USA, and UK. So, there I can create something report format like string India. USA has one and India has two UK has one one so and so so in this way I can create a report based on the requirement or I can use some calculation so so in the same way you uh, India and uh, account information or the postal codes and everything so and so we can create the report format that is called uh, that is output so data with channels for printing purpose so every record will start with i mean each uh, output will start with one having some breaks which we which means that so it needs to be break during the print so the main importance of this data source are it is it will be easy to sort the data either in ascending or descending order based on the position so we can create a report and store in the data sets it can create different length data set that is minimum is one and the maximum it depends uh, normally i have coded up to 2500 as my maximum record length so how do we identify the ps the data set if it is a ps or if it is a pds or po so while writing a jcl if the data set organization is equal to ps then it is ps or after creating a data set press f8 button on the main frame so you can see the volume data set organization created data created date read date in fact it shows the properties in fact it shows all the properties of the ps whatever you coded in the jcl the example of uh, writing a ps or creating a data, data set is the SNDS or sample PS, new catalog delete since I'm creating a new data set so I need to mention it as new what happens if it is a normal is just catalog what happens if it is a abnormal just deleted the created data set so space tracks uh, as, as I said it can be cylinders it can be tracks it can be anything so cylinders primary and secondary release release when the data set is unused storage space dcb record length 133 since i'm creating a report so i mentioned it as fba so that it can it will add a channels the block size multiple 133 into 10 or simply you can give specify zero so that system will system will have their own storage block size defined so it is better to use zero or it depends upon you so data set organization is ps so that's it that this is a very simple way of understanding the ps and its importance so now let's look into what is pds or pu and its importance pds stands for partition data set or partition organization organize so the name itself indicates that it is a partition data set so i can give you a single example you have a flat or you have a apartment where we can see a different kind different floors or uh, multiple stores so a single apartment is having 10 stores so they are partitioned they are partitioned into different ways so in the same way in a company you have different kinds of teams different kinds of departments where they are partitioned into a different so a pds is a partition data set it may contain multiple sets of records called members that it means the PS is said to be a single record or a one member whereas if you want to store multiple records or members common storage area and have a group defined for it so so, so you will go for the PDS that is the reason we are calling it as partition data set or partition organized so in real time we will create different kinds of PDS so for example I have a set of JCLs created 
or a set of procs, set of cards, set of programs created. So where I want to store, what I want to do is I want to store this into a common data set. So what I can do is just I will simply define a data set, define a PDS member. So with uh, having the data set organization as PO or PDS, the maximum record length will be like 80. Just I will give it as default. So where all my JCL programs are into a tso.userid.jclib library and my programs are in source library this is my program 1, program 2, program 3 and in the same way for procs, proc 1, proc 2, proc 3 so the same is the case for cardlib so this is how the PDS works and its importance so when you start doing programming or doing coding when you start working on this this will really really helpful to you and this is the this is very easy to understand so in in real time so what they do is all all uh, all the programmers they create JCL they create member they create source libraries and they store it into a common library called JCL lib and common library called uh, source lib for program and common proc library for program so whoever comes news into the program it is easy for him to have a reference to the proc lib and just can see a different kinds of procs created and it is the best easy way to access the proc libraries and it is easy way to organize so so that was about the importance of PS and the PDS so now we will look at the I important IBM utilities so we have many many IBM utilities so which comes as by default or which we need to buy so these are the basic IBM utilities which we use in our day-to-day -day life or day-to-day -day work so IEB Jenner, IEB Copy, IEB FP, IEB R14 and IEB, IEB Compare these are the very frequent uh, utilities which we use so what is the importance of IEB Copy so it make a copy of partition data set or PDS so merge partition data sets except when loading so create a sequential form of PDS or PDSC for a backup or a transport Re reload one or more member from a PDS into a partition data set so select specific members of a PDS uh, to be copied loaded then under replace members of a partition data set rename select members of partition data sets exclude members from a data set to be copied unloaded or loaded compress partition data sets in place upgrade to the load model faster loading by mvs program fetch so it sounds very good so ib copy ib copy copy and reblock the load models convert load models into pds program objects so convert a partition data set copy are from a PDS data set to a member to alias us together as a group so it sounds so so important of IB copy right so so this is the sample uh, sample JCL so what I'm doing it here is IB copy I'm copying the data set from PS to PS1 so this is the it, it is creating a duplicate copy of this in the same way you can have multiple JCLs created for IBM copy with the above mentioned points. So IB Jenner create a backup copy of PS or member of PDS, expand a PDS by creating members and merging them into existing data sets, produce an edited sequential or partition data set, reblock or change the logical record length of a data set, copy sequential output data sets, supply editing facilities and exists for your routing. So IB general is also used to copy a data sets from one data set to another data set. It is and it is used to create delete the data set. It, is, it can also be used to delete the data. It is used to create I next important uh, utility is IEFBR4 in it is used to create data sets like PS, PDS and it can also delete a data sets. So below is the sample example of creating a data set. So this is a job card, activity, system defined program, IUBF VR14 or an IBM utility. So I'm trying to create a data set with TSO sample, this new catalog. 
so it's providing a space so ps you know equal to disk so that all that is the importance of iof we are 14 coming to ib compare use it to compare two sequential data sets or two partition data sets or at the logical record level to verify the backup copy fixed variable or undefined data uh, records from blocked or unblocked data sets or members can also be compared note a very important note is ib compare cannot compare a load module this is only used to compare sequential data sets or partition data sets is this have which is readable so the other various important utilities or IEH move IEH program IFH starter these are the important uh, these are they are rarely used so but it is good to know about these utilities thank you for watching my video I hope you have enjoyed this video if you if you like my video please give a like or please subscribe my videos I would keep on posting the more and more videos about the GCL COBOL and various other CIE CICS DB2 and everything so once again thank you for watching my video have a great and wonderful day